Good morning. Today I'm going to talk about the cartilage and the bone. If you remember from the last lecture when we discussed the connective tissue, I said that cartilage and bone are considered as a specialized connective tissue. So the objective for this lecture, in this lecture we are going only to talk about the cartilage and the next lecture we are going to talk about the bone. So the objective to understand the structures and function and characteristic of the three different types of cartilages. So the first question, why are these connective tissue? These are considered as connective tissue for three reasons. First one, both of them have cells, extracellular fibers, and matrix. And these are the same as the component of the connective tissue. If you remember, we said that the connective tissue, generally, they have cells, extracellular fibers, and matrix. And here in the cartilage and bones, we will see both of them have collagen and elastic fibers. They have a glycoprotein, which is the gel-like matrix. And then we have the fibroblast type cells. However, in the cartilage, we call them chondroplast and chondrocyte for mature cells and osteoplast and osteocyte for the mature cells. The second reason, they generally have function of mechanical and physiological support and protection. If you remember from the anatomy lecture, we said our brain uh, is found inside the cranial cavity and we said that these bones of the skull bone protect the brain as the brain is a very delicate structure also for the heart and lung they found in the thoracic cavity we said we have the bony thorax and again this will provide the protection uh, also we said that the bones are the reservoir for the calcium and phosphorus. Whenever, whenever there is increase in the calcium phosphorus levels in the blood, they are going to be reserved in the bone. If there is a reduction in these levels in the blood, bone is going to break down and then there will be a release of calcium and phosphorus. The third thing, they are related with the other connective tissue in history and development. We will talk later about the development of the cartilage and the bone. We will see cartilage is developed directly from the mesenchymal connective tissue, whereas the bone, we have two types uh, for the formation of the bone. The first one, which is the intramembranous ossification. In this type, we have the mesenchymal cells, and these mesenchymal cells are going to transform into osteoplasts and going to release the fibers and matrix and then this matrix is going to be ossified so we can see here there's a relation in history in the development between the connective tissue which is the cartilage and the bone with the other connective tissue specifically the mesenchymal connective tissue so we'll start with the cartilage Cartilage, as I said before, a specialized form of fibrous connective tissue. Cartilage, avascular, there is no blood supply inside the cartilages. Aneural, there is no nerve or nerve ending inside the cartilage. Usually the cartilage, the definition is chondrocyte embedded in the extracellular matrix. Cartilage, as any other organ in our body, need oxygen and nutrient. And usually the nutrient and the waste material pass to and from the cells through matrix through diffusion. So this depends in the diffusion, the cartilage to get uh, their needs of nutrient and oxygen. When we consider the function of the cartilage, the first function, which is to support the soft tissue, our trachea is supported by C-shaped cartilage. And this allows that the trachea is patent all the time, is open all the time. Otherwise, we are going to die from suffocation. The second function, which is guide the development and growth of the long bone. As I said before, for the bone formation, we have two types of formation. We have the endochondral ossification and we have the intramembranous ossification. In 
in the endochondral ossification first cartilage is developed then this cartilage is replaced by a bone and this we call it as the endochondral ossification so as i said here so the cartilage guide the development and growth of the long bone we have three types of cartilage we have the hyaline cartilage we have the elastic cartilage and finally we have the fibro cartilage as I said, we have the hyaline, elastic, and the fibrous. So the hyaline cartilage, which is the archetype cartilage, provide mechanical support, cover the articular surface of the bone, model for the formation of the skeleton, and also play a role in the repairs of the fractures. Whenever there's a fracture in the bone, there's a breakdown in the bone, first at the, tie, at the site of the fracture, cartilage will develop and later this cartilage will be replaced by the bone. However, the elastic cartilage is found where resilience and springiness is needed. And we'll talk later about the function of the elastic cartilage. The last form, which is the fibro cartilage, it's very limited and it's transitional form. In this type, we have rows of bundles of collagenous connective tissue and between them there will be a rows of chondrocyte. So we'll start with the first type which is the hyaline cartilage which is hylos or glassy because there's appearance in the specimen most of the time we can see it as clear as a glass so from there it came the naming of this type which is the hyaline cartilage. As I said, in this hyaline cartilage, it's found in the articular surface. You can see here it's found in the articular surfaces. Okay, it's found in the bony thorax. You remember the ribs, we said we have bony part and we have here the cartilaginous, which will be hyaline cartilage. Also, I said in the trachea, it's supported by C-shaped cartilage. However, in the area of the bronchi, we'll have a complete circle of hyaline cartilage. For the cells of the cartilages, we said we have the chondrocyte, and the chondrocyte is the mature cartilage. And usually these cells, the chondrocyte is embedded inside lacuna in the matrix. We'll see like there is like a space and inside this space we have this cell this space here we call it as the lacuna and this lacuna is an artifact it's not real you remember when we, pre we prepare the, the slide we use alcohol and xylene and we do hydration dehydration so whenever we do hydration dehydration there will be a removal of water and when we do this process there will be form a space here this space here which is not a true space this space is called the lacuna the other cell we have which is the chondrogenic cells and usually these chondrogenic cells it's stem like cell okay and these cells is going to transform and activate it to be chondroplast and again plast which is the active cells this cells will be responsible for the protection of the matrix and the fibers so we have chondrogenic cells chondrogenic cells will be activated to chondroplast chondroplast going to form the matrix and the fibers and whenever the cells is surrounded by the matrix and the fibers then the cells is called the chondrocyte so the cell that found inside the lacuna is the chondrocyte so as i said here once the cells become totally surrounded by the matrix we call them as the chondrocyte. This chondrocyte is very important because they make and maintain the cartilage matrix. So this is responsible also for the maintenance of the cartilage. Usually in each lacuna, we'll have one chondrocyte. However, sometimes 
maybe we find more than one cells. If we find more than one cells, we call them as isogenous group. And usually we could find in this group between two to eight cells. And all of these cells is found in the same lacuna. And this happens when the cells divide. Usually when they divide, they should go to two different lacuna. However, if they divide and stay at the same lacuna, then they are going to form the isogenous group. So at this slide here, we can see this is the area of the cartilage. And we can see here all of these cells inside these spaces, we call them chondrocyte. And the space that the cells are set in, we call it as the lacuna. As I said, sometimes we can see only one cell, and sometimes we can see two cells, and sometimes more than two cells. I said between two to eight cells could be in the same lacuna. And this type, we call it, or these structures, we call them as the isogenous group. See here, this is one lacuna, and inside it, we have two cells. And the space here, as I said, this is artifact, it's not the true space. See here the isogenous group. You can see here there's one, two, three, four, and five cells in the same lacuna or the same space. So, as I said, the cartilage has cells, fiber, and matrix. For the cells, as I said, we have the chondrogenic cells, we have the chondroplast, and we have the chondrocyte. So, chondrogenic cells, chondroplast, chondrocyte. For the fibers, we have the type 2 collagen fiber. For the matrix, again, we have amorphous ground substance and usually this amorphous ground substance is consists of protoglycan aggregate which is containing chondro, uh, chondrotin and keratin sulfate and hyaluronic acid and also contain chondronectin which is a glycoprotein so both of them which is you remember when we talk about the connective tissue, we said we have the glucosa glycan and protoglycan, which is again uh, the similar as the component of the other connective tissue. So we have cells, we have fiber, we have matrix. For the cells, we have chondrogenic cells that can activate it to be chondroplast. Chondroplast responsible for protection of the matrix and the fibers once surrounded by the matrix and the fibers the name of the cell will be the chondrocyte for the fibers we have type 2 collagen for the matrix we have amorphous ground substance again it consists of the protoglycan and glucosaminoglycans in this slide here we can see these lacuna inside these lacuna we have the chondrocyte. We can see here the matrix. However, we could not see the fibers. And the reason that we could not see the fibers because the fibers and the matrix have the same refractive index. If we looking from a distance in two things that they have the same color, it will be difficult to distinguish between these two objects and here is the same because the matrix and the fibers have the same refractive index we could not resolve or we could not see the collagen fibers so only what we can see here we can see the lacuna inside this lacuna we have the chondrocyte and here the area where we have the matrix for this matrix, usually we, they 
categorize them into two areas. We have the first area here, which is around the lacuna. We call them as territorial or capsular matrix. And usually this area is poor in collagen fiber. Usually they have a rich amount of glucose aminoglycan from the matrix. However, the fibers, the collagen fiber too, is limited. They are poor. In the area here, which is between the lacuna, we call them as interterritorial or the intercapsular matrix. Usually the area around the lacuna, they are more basophilic. When I say more basophilic, I mean they are more blue. The color is blue. And usually this because as I said before, they are rich in glucose aminoglycan and bore in the collagen. And the staining, the blue, due to the high amount of the protoglycans. So again, this is the area of the chondrocyte inside the lacuna. This area here, we call it the capsular or territorial. And this area here, we it's the interterritorial, intercapsular area. As I said before, this area here, we have more blue color. As I said, because they are rich in glucose aminoglycan, however, they are low or poor in the collagen fibers. Now I'm going to talk about a very important structure found in the cartilage, which is the perichondrium. The perichondrium is a layer of dense irregular connective tissue that surround the cartilages. So if we have the cartilage at this area here, we'll have a tissue surround the cartilage, and this tissue is called the perichondrium. This perichondrium consists of two layers. The first layer, which is the outer fibrous layer, containing type 1 collagen fiber, fibroblast, and the blood vessels, okay? And the other one, which is the inner cellular, and this one contain the chondrogenic cells. And this is very important. If you remember in the first lecture, we said that the cartilage avascular, so they need nutrient, they need oxygen, and usually the nutrient and oxygen is going to the cartilage through the diffusion. So the source of this nutrient and the oxygen will be from the blood vessels that surround the cartilage, which is from the perichondrium. And the other thing, if you remember when we talk about the cells of the cartilage, we said we have three types. We have the chondrogenic cells, we have the chondroplast, and we have the chondrocyte. So the inner layer of the perichondrium will contain the chondrogenic cells, which are the source of the new cartilage cells. As I said, this is very important, the perichondrium, because they provide the blood supply for the avascular cartilage. So this is the cartilage here. And you can see here, this is the tissue that surround the cartilage, which is, which is the perichondrium. The inner layer, which is the cellula, as I said, contain the chondrogenic cells, whereas the outer layer will be the fibrous layer, which is the dense, irregular, connective tissue. Here it's more clear. See here, we can see the cartilage. And at this type, we have the chondrocyte, Outside, we have the perichondrium, then we have the inner cellular, which is the chondrogenic cells. As I say, these cells, when activated, will form the chondroplast. Once these cells are surrounded by the matrix and the fiber, we call them as the chondrocyte. In all type of cartilages, the hyaline cartilage and elastic cartilage, we have the perichondrium. However, in the fibrocartilage, we don't have the perichondrium. 
in the hyaline cartilage in all cartilages the hyaline cartilages we have the pericondrium except for the area of the articular surface you can see here there's the area of the articular surface at this area here we don't have the perichondrium and this is very important because whenever there is a damage for the area of the articular surface the healing is very poor because you you know that healing usually depend in the blood supply whatever there is a large blood supply usually the healing is faster whenever the blood supply is low the healing will be very slow and sometimes repair will be by fibrous tissue or by the scar tissue now i'm going to talk about the elastic cartilage which is the second type of cartilage in this type also we has the perichondrium similar to the hyaline cartilage the matrix contain network of elastic fiber so this is the different instead of having collagen fiber type 2 we have the elastic fiber and this was responsible for giving this cartilage the yellowish color usually the elastic fiber tend to have the yellow color usually the elastic cartilage is found where flexible support is required it's found in the external ear station tube and the epiglottis and some part of the larynx the second important thing about the type of cartilage is less prone to degeneration than the hyaline cartilage usually the hyaline cartilage with aging usually undergo classification and it's more prone to damage however the elastic cartilage is less prone to these type of changes in this type you can see here again we have the chondrocyte and this chondrocyte inside this lacuna and the very important structure we start to see the fibers usually these fiber we could not see in the hyaline cartilage and the area outside here we have the area of the perichondrium again it has the same structure it has the inner cellular which is the chondrogenic cells and we have the outer layer which is the dense irregular connective tissue again here we can see these cells which is lacuna chondrocyte inside this lacuna and here we can see the fiber which is the elastic fiber this is image with higher magnification again this is the area of lacuna inside this lacuna we have the chondrocyte and at this area here we have the elastic fibers as i said in the previous type of cartilage which is the hyaline cartilage we could not see these fiber because they have the same as the refractive index as the matrix however here the elastic cartilage does not have the same refractive index as the matrix so we can easily we can resolve them we can see them again this is the area and this is the area of the perichondrium and we can see here this is the area of the fibers usually in the elastic cartilage the chondrocytes are larger and the isogenous group are closely spaced see here this area of lacuna are, are bigger than the one we can see in the hyaline cartilage and then we can see they are very close to each other compared with the hyaline cartilage so at this type here we have this is the area of the chondrocyte inside this lacuna and here we have all of these are the fibers which is the elastic fiber and the outside here we have the very chondrium this is a comparison between the hyaline cartilage and the elastic cartilage in the hyaline cartilage there is more matrix however in the elastic we have less matrix here we have collagen fiber however we have the elastic fiber it's more fibrous the second thing 
as I said about the isogenousity groups, I said these lacuna are bigger and they are closely packed. However, here they are smaller and you can see there's a lot of spaces between them. However, from outside, both of them have the berichondrium. The last type we have, which is the fibrocartilage. In this type, it's very important, there is no perichondrium. Very important, there is no perichondrium in the fibrocartilage. The properties of this type, which is the fibrocartilage, is between the dense connective tissue and the hyaline cartilage. At this time, we will see rows, bundles of collagenous connective tissue and between these rows we have lacuna and inside these lacuna will have the chondrocyte. Very important, the lacuna structure only we can see in cartilage and bone. So as I said here, we have alternating rows of fibroblast drive chondrocyte and we have thick bundle of type 1 collagen. Usually the fibrocartilage is found where support and tensile strength are needed in conjunction with the hyaline cartilage. Usually it's usually found around the area where we have the hyaline cartilage. In this type, we could find it, for example, in the intervertebral disc between the two bodies of the vertebra. We, between them, we can see the intervertebral disc. If you remember, we said we have the outer fibrous layer and we have the soft tissue. And you remember, I said it consists of the fibrocartilage, the area of the articular disc, the pubic symphysis the area of the tendon and ligament insertion where the tendon and ligament attached with the bone and very important in the knee joint menisci. If you remember, as I said, in the knee joint, we have this structure, which is the C-shape. This C-shape structure, which is the menisci, is composed or uh, formed from the fibrocartilage. Usually can be easily confused with the regular connective tissue. The one thing that can help us to differentiate between the fibrocartilage and the dense regular connective tissue, the presence of the lacuna and inside this lacuna we have the chondrocyte. You can see here this is the bundle, same orientation. However, we have here the area of the lacuna and you see this is the space and inside this space we have the chondrocyte. See here again these all bundles of the collagen and here we have the rows of the chondrocyte and all of these chondrocyte is found inside these lacunae. The last thing I'm going to talk about, which is, is about the growth of the cartilage. Usually the growth of the cartilage, we have two types of growth. We have a growth from inside to outside or from outside to inside. From outside to inside, we call this type a positional growth. If you remember, I said before, we have the fibers, and we have the chondrogenic cells. And chondrogenic cells is going to transform into chondroblast. I said these cells going to form the matrix and the fibers. Once surrounded by the matrix, we call them as the chondrocyte. So we can see here the addition of the new cartilage will be from outside to inside. At this type, we called it as the oppositional growth. In the second type, which is the interstitial growth, at this type here, we have these cells, which is the lacuna. Inside this lacuna, we have the chondrocyte. These chondrocyte undergo division and this division will result in the formation of a new of two chondrocytes and these chondrocytes will has their own matrix and fiber and space which is the lacuna and at this type here 
we call it as interstitial because the growth will be from inside to outside. Sometimes when the these chondrocytes undergo the division process, they will not separate it into two separate lacuna. We call them as the isogenous group, if you remember from the early of the lecture. The last thing I'm going to talk about, which is the cartilage repair. You have to remember very important cartilage has a very limited repair capability. The first reason, cartilage avascular. And I said before, to repair any tissue depend in the vascularization. Whenever a lot of blood supply, that means more blood, more nutrient, more stem cells, that will result in the repair process. However, whenever the tissue is avascular, then it has a very limited repair capability. Usually, if there's a damage to the cartilage happen, if the damage, for example, at this area here, if the chondrocyte left, okay, these cells will undergo the division process and these cells going to secrete the matrix and the fibers and this has a limited capability of repair however if the damage is a huge and there is a loss of the chondrocyte then the repair will be by a scar tissue the repair instead of we having cartilage cell chondrocyte then we have the fibrous which is the dense irregular connective tissue and you know here if we lose the chondrocyte, then we lose the function. And if we replace the scar tissue by the chondrocyte, then again, there will be a loss of the function. If you remember before two slides, I talk about the oppositional growth. I said we have the chondrogenic cells. Chondrogenic cells can under transform into chondroplast. Chondroplast is going to secrete the matrix and the fiber. Once surrounded by the matrix and fibers, these cells will be called as chondrocyte. Again, we have limited capability of regeneration. And as I said, if the damage is huge, then there will be replaced by fibrous tissue or the scar tissue. With aging, it could happen that in the cartilage, in the heading cartilage, will be deposition of the minerals. As I said, this is less common to happen in the elastic cartilage. Thank you.